In the last lesson, we installed and set up a Docker Postgres database that we're going to use for permanent storage of our data. Uh, but of course, just having the database isn't really enough. We also want some kind of way for us to connect to that database from Axum so that we can, uh, well, get access to the data, store things, retrieve them out, and send them back to the front end. And it's important to remember that these are just tools working for us and that we just don't have a checklist that we're blindly following. Now, technology to use for this database that we need. Um, I've decided to go with a technology called CORM. Now, previously I was uh, looking at some other um, ORMs to use, uh, including Diesel. Uh, and Diesel, it turns out, for an introductory course and run through on backend uh, uh, technologies, it just was ending up being a little bit too complex and a little bit too sort of hard to get set up with um, on its own. So I decided to skip that. CRM just worked straight out of the box on my side and with uh, some of the other people that were playing around with it. So that is what we're going with. Now, CRM's website, is uh, is here. It's um, uh, c-ql.org. It's got a lovely logo and it's got pretty good documentation for uh, uh, for working with Axum and uh, with any other of the backend frameworks. Um, now it is an ORM, so that stands for an object relational mapping. Uh, this object ORMs are really made for object-oriented programming and mapping to data structures or other data types. Um, oftentimes that is used to communicate between an object-oriented language and a database itself. Um, you may notice that Rust often doesn't claim to be an object-oriented language, but because it has structs that kind of sort of act like classes, just ones that don't have direct inheritance, uh, there, there is a sort of object-oriented style of program that we can do. So this lets us know that we're going to be very object-oriented, but I think that's going to be okay. Uh, the other really big reason to use ORMs, in my opinion, is that it, uh, it abstracts some of the uh, complexity away from the con communicating with the database and just gives you a uh, a layer, an interface on top of that, well, complexity, to make it a little bit easier for us. And so that way, if you have complex joins, if you have other strange data types or just anything weird going on in your database, the ORM tends to make it really simple. It also tends to do things like uh, ensure that you don't have common security vulnerabilities from, that might result from directly connecting to a database like, you know, injection attacks or other fun things that, that come with that. So given that we're going with CRM, let's go ahead and spit up a brand new project. Previously, we were, all of our um, code was in this routing folder here. We're now going to be in data. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a new terminal in data here. And it is completely empty. So we're going to initialize a brand new Rust project where all the data stuff is going to go into. So we're going to do a uh, cargo init. Here we have data stuff. And we're going to now, let's go find the documentation where we add, uh, where we're going to add in a CRM. So I want basics under installation and configuration. So it's C-ORM. And I do notice that they have some features they're gonna want us to install. So I'm just gonna use the cargo add command again. So cargo add CRM. And if we come back to here, uh, it first wants us to choose a database driver. And uh, we have several different options. We're, for this course, I've, I'm going to be using a Postgres driver. If you're bringing your own database and you want to use MySQL or SQLite, uh, those options are also available to you. Uh, okay, so I want, which was this, SQLX Postgres. So this specific one. So we're going to do capital F, SQLX Postgres, 
And then also they want us to choose an async runtime. Now, this is important for us to choose one a runtime that works with our uh, with Axum. Now, Axum is made by the same team that made Tokyo, and because of that, they use the Tokyo async runtime. So that's exactly what we want to to run with here. So it, looking at this uh, runtime Tokyo Rust LS or runtime Tokyo native TLS. They actually explain um, that native TLS uses the platform's native security facilities while Rust LS, Rust LS is a pure Rust implementation. Let's go with Rust LS with that. We'll stay with Rust here. So this is gonna be something with Tokyo and Rust LS. So runtime Tokyo Rust LS, copy that. Hit install, and we've got those things installed. Now, if necessary, there's some other things for us that we may need here in the future. So uh, I'm noticing that Postgres array. So if we need to work with Postgres arrays, most likely that's what this is for. Debug print. If we want to debug out some SQL in the future, we may come back to that. Uh, and I think that's I think that's everything. Everything else that's already added in here, feature-wise, looks like we're gonna have some time stuff added in for us. UUID support, that's gonna be that's good. I don't know if we're gonna use UUIDs. Uh, but so I've just found that this can be can be good to sort of like review what the features are and uh, if there's any that we any extras that we want to add in. None right at this time. Okay, so if we take a look at our cargo toml inside of data, we have these features available for us. And looking at what we had planned to do for that one, that is introducing CRM. Go ahead and mark that off. Um, in the, the coming videos, we'll also connect this to a database and then generate the data models that we'll be using. So thank you so much for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.